while it hasn't all been sunshine and roses, we should be very wary about rushing back to the way things used to be. Lockdown has taught us many things and some of those involve a better way of living. So these are the lessons that you do not want to lose. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and even though you might be returning to your pre-pandemic normal life, you know, maybe going back to work, actually putting on pants, leaving the house, there are some parts of the lockdown life that you should not leave behind. And one of the first is this idea that when we band together, when we all come together, we can really affect positive change, you know, when we all look out for each other, when we're all on the same page, when we're all working towards the same goal, we can have massive results. The more people who get on board, the quicker and the better the outcome. Now, I have a tendency of be being a bit of a lone wolf, uh, a bit of a control freak too, so sometimes I feel that I should be the one to do everything and you know I can do everything better than anyone else can do it but that's just not true and that's what this lockdown has taught me it's about community it's about coming together I have loved seeing um, people you know helping each other you know the power of the crowd and even from a distance but you know like sharing resources and supporting each other and just generally everyone coming together in a physically distanced way to help each other and to support this kind of greater cause and to uh, um, be involved in something that is bigger than ourselves but something that is really truly important. In our neighborhood we have been sharing you know like magazines and jigsaw puzzles and you know offering to go if we're going to the store offering to get things for other people to save them having to leave the house things like that and it has been really lovely you know having everyone come together and work towards this common goal. So that's a big lesson I think it's that we can all go further when we are together. We have also seen the benefit of kind of like quick making quick decisions being decisive and being proactive. Now there's definitely something to be said for the old wait and see approach and I've been trying to figure out you know what is the difference between waiting and just procrastinating and I think it comes down to the outcome. So waiting is when you are waiting and it will lead to a greater result. You are waiting because you need more information. You are waiting to be in a better position. Whereas procrastination, by putting things off, what you're actually doing is increasing the risk of something terrible happening, or you are increasing the effort or the downsides, essentially. Let me give you a very basic kind of everyday example doing the dishes, like dirty dishes, if you put them off until tomorrow, you're not waiting to do the dishes. You are procrastinating because by leaving them until tomorrow, you are potentially creating a bigger, more horrible job for yourself because all the stains will have set, all the stuff will then smell. It will just be a less pleasant job. That is the difference between waiting and procrastinating. Procrastination means a problem grows. So that's what I have taken from this lockdown. It's that decisive action, you know, like a stitch in time and all that jazz. Then I think we have all kind of had a taste of something or we've all discovered something maybe about ourselves that we want to carry forward and we want to develop. So for this one, maybe I can give you a quick story. In the beginning of March, right before most of the world went on lockdown, I was in Palm Springs in California attending a conference and I went to a workshop that was all about Procreate, the app Procreate and just like how to use it and drawing on it and stuff like that. Digital art, essentially. And I really, really enjoyed it. And then I had this ridiculous thought. <laughs> I found myself thinking, I wish I had more time to do this. And it was just one of those things that was so silly because I gave myself a mental kick up the arse. And I thought, like, you make the time to do this. If you really want to do this, find the time. And that is essentially what I have been doing. I made a little list for myself of all the things that I actually wanted to make time to do because I don't know about you but when I have time off sometimes I tend to waste that. You know I'm not very intentional about how I spend that time so now I've made a list for myself of all the things that I actually want to do. I've learned how important it is to make the time for all of those little projects and I think that is what a lot of people are also 
are realizing during lockdown that they've had more time to focus on those little projects and those things that they wanted to do around the house and I think that is definitely something that we should all carry forward. It's also a good reminder that we can choose how to spend our time. Now obviously there are still some things that we have to do, some things that maybe are outside our control but for the vast majority of our time we can choose what we do with that time, how we spend that time. I think that has been very eye-opening and very freeing for a lot of people. Uh, like I said, pre kind of lockdown, I took all of this for granted and I just, when I had time off, I didn't really, uh, it's not that I didn't choose how to spend the time, but I didn't really choose it wisely. You know, I kind of sat down and maybe watched something or scrolled through social media and I just kind of allowed myself to be taken over by that stuff. Whereas now I am much more proactive about choosing what I do with my time and how I spend my time. And I think that is something that we should all bring with us again into our post pandemic life. On top of that, we have, a lot of us have discovered new skills or we have dabbled in new hobbies. Um, for most people, I think we have all tried to grow a little bit of food. Uh, maybe you've taken on a little DIY project. Maybe you've learned a language. There's so many different and wonderful things that I have been hearing about. And I think that it is one of those things again, where we never think we have the time to dedicate to, think, to things like that. And now we are discovering that, hey, we can learn new things and we can do new things. I've heard of people, you know, learning how to use power tools and different types of equipment and just discovering things that they never thought they could do, creating things they never thought that they could create, um, engaging in little activities and hobbies that have maybe never even crossed their mind previously. I think it's a wonderful reminder that no matter what stage of life we are at, we can all learn and do new things. If you know someone who has done something great during the pandemic, you know, something that they are really proud of, share this video with them so that you can encourage them and support them to like keep it up, to keep going. Really embrace that newfound passion or activity or hobby. I think we've all also learned how to take better care of things how to tend to things. So again, coming back to that whole, a lot of us have been, you know, gardening and planting seeds and growing things. And that's wonderful. And I think we've all learned to kind of pour our energy and our time and our love and our care into things like that, like plants and things. Um, but not just that, not just with flowers and plants and food, but also ourselves and our relationships when we haven't been able to, uh, you know, physically spend time with people, I think a lot of us are pouring more effort into our relationships and keeping them alive and into ourselves as well. A lot of us have been faced with very tough situations um, during the pandemic and it's been a very difficult time to various different degrees for different people, but I think we're all turning inwards a little bit more and looking after ourselves a little bit more. That is something that we should definitely keep up, being more centered on ourselves, on our relationships, on, on the things that kind of matter to us, the things that are going to grow and blossom and flourish. Leading on from that then, I think a lot of us are turning away from that kind of consumerist life. For a lot of us, myself included, because we are not out at the shops as often, we're not making those purchases. We're not just, you know, strolling around the stores on a weekend afternoon, picking things up that we don't really need. Certainly for me, I have noticed a huge difference in the amount of money that I'm spending. I know for some people, um, they went, you know, a little bit overboard maybe on the online shopping because um, it was just kind of that gut reaction. But I think, you know, coming out of it now, I think we're all learning that we don't need as much as we thought we did. I've seen a huge amount of people, you know, decluttering and things like that. But when we're not out shopping as a hobby, as a pastime, as a way to pass an afternoon, I think we've all learned now that we can make do 
with what we already have. So I really hope that that is something that we continue to do, that we turn away from that kind of, you know, fast fashion or like quick fix, um, just buy all the things mentality. It's also going to be much kinder to the planet, um, not just in that, but in other ways, you know, a lot of us now are growing our own food or, you know, little bits of our own food. I'm growing some potato plants and it's been wonderful to actually see them grow. Um, I can't wait to harvest them. But things like that, you know, turning back Back to nature. Um, I think we've all or most of us have seen those images from Venice in Italy where the canals are now clear. You know you can actually see through them and see the fish in the water. Sam and I went on honeymoon to Italy and we spent a few days in Venice and let me tell you the waters definitely were not <laughs> clear when we were there. We had a wonderful time. A little fun fact for you, uh, we actually found out that I was pregnant when we were in Venice, so it holds very special memories for us. And that particular day that we found out that I was pregnant, we took a gondola ride on the canals. So it really holds great memories for us, but again, the water is definitely were not clear at the time. I've also seen pictures of, you know, large cities that used to be essentially covered in smog where people couldn't see the sky, maybe couldn't see the tops of really tall buildings, couldn't see mountains, you know, the scenery. And now for the first time in years, they can actually see those things. You know, the smog has lifted. People are talking about being able to hear birds sing for the first time in years. Maybe it's my imagination. I mean, we've always had birds around here, but I think this year, genuinely, I do believe there has been a lot more bird song. I've heard it in the morning. It just seems to be, uh, it just seems to be more of it. It seems to be louder. I've noticed more birds around. We have loads of birds' nests around the place, more bees, things like that. Again, maybe it's my imagination. Definitely, that is something that I want to see continue. People just making a little bit more of an effort to be kinder to the environment. I think we're also realizing that we can let go of a lot of things or we can live without a lot of things without negative consequences. Yes, there have been things that we do not want to live without, but there are other things. Maybe we have got into bad habits, like maybe strolling around the shops um, of an afternoon, kind of spending more money than we would necessarily like. Maybe we have been eating out a little bit more than we would like and it's affecting you know, our budget, maybe even our waistlines, things like that. I think now, you know, now that we've gone through a lockdown and we have seen what it's like to live without a lot of those things and to realize that we can live without a lot of those things, I think that will change people's behaviors and make them realize that all the things that they were chasing before, they don't necessarily need those things to live a happy, fulfilled life. We've also learned how resourceful we can be, you know, when you don't have access to all of those things, we're learning to use up what we have. And I think one thing that I, you know, in recent years I have noticed is that we have lost the ability to be bored. When you've got a phone in your pocket at all times, when you've got access to the internet, when you've got books and things like that, there is just constant entertainment waiting there for you at every second of the day and night and we've lost that ability that we used to have as kids or certainly I used to have as a kid to you know be bored for a while and then use that boredom to fuel something new you know you get creative you go out and find something to do you create something you make up a game you use your imagination and your ingenuity to come up with all sorts of new and exciting things. I know we say that necessity is the mother of all invention, but I also feel that boredom is the mother of all invention because how many things have been discovered when we've just been like playing around with something, we didn't really have anything else distracting us, we were just kind of like experimenting, a bit of trial and error, just trying to amuse ourselves. Um, I think that's wonderful and that's something that we have lost in recent years that ability to just you know have some time where we're kind of bored and we're looking for something to do and trying to be more resourceful and create something from nothing and leading on from that we've also discovered how much we can do 
when we put our minds to things, when we really just focus on one thing and we're not distracted by other things, we really can get a lot done. Sometimes we use the excuse, I feel, of, oh, I'm too busy, I don't have the time for that. And then, you know, we all went into lockdown and people realized that all of the things maybe that they previously considered a chore, all the things that they were previously putting off, like gardening, like decluttering, and maybe getting their homes in order, things like that, suddenly became something wonderful that they could do. When they actually got intentional about it, it became a lovely hobby, a lovely pastime, a good way to spend a few hours maybe um, with the people that you were living with, people you were sharing a space, that you all came together and did something together. When we're not, you know, pulled in all these different directions, when we're not constantly leaving the house and doing things, we really focus on getting other things done, maybe things that we have been putting off <laughs> for a long time. And I think as well, when we slow down, we achieve much more and that sounds counterintuitive and I know some people may feel that well yeah I got more done during lockdown because you know maybe they weren't working so that wasn't um, you know taking up eight odd hours of their day but I do still feel that for some people what they got done during three-ish months of lockdown they probably hadn't achieved in the three-ish years previously so even though yes um, before lockdown you may have had other things that were kind of you know taking up a large chunk of your time I still feel that we were more intentional with our time during lockdown and that is why a lot of us got so many projects and little things done because we weren't going to work all day and then coming home and maybe sitting in front of the TV as a way of just passing a few hours. We were actively looking for ways to spend our time and um, you know, things that we could do, jobs that we could finish, tasks that we could tick off our list. So I do feel that that kind of slowing down, being more intentional helped us to get more done and helped us to realize how much we can actually achieve when we do slow down and give something our focus and our attention. I think we are coming out of that idea of the rat race, which has been so prevalent um, in recent years that it's always just more, 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 like go, go, go. I Personally, I had a bit of a light bulb moment um, in terms of the rat race. Years ago when I worked in retail, I was looking after a specific department in a store and it was the second busiest department in the store. So, you know, I was always on the go, keeping busy, always had something to do. And after a while of working there, you know, getting everything kind of like ship shape, they asked me to take over another department in the store. And that was fine. I did it, um, really enjoyed the job, loved the people that I worked with, got on really well with everyone, got on really well with my managers. Um, but now I was working essentially two jobs <laughs> and I should also mention that at the time I was also studying law so it was an option to do it as an evening course so I was working from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and then in college from about 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. so it was a very kind of full-on time for me but anyway after a few months then of doing those two jobs, the two different departments, they asked me if I would go into the office and look after a lot of financial stuff, balancing the books, uh, looking after all the cash. Um, and that was because the girl who used to do that full time, she had left. So now I was essentially doing the work of three people. And I went in for a normal like performance review. And like I said, got on really well with my manager, sat down with him. He was saying, you know, that Everything was great, they were really happy with my work, um, and I was happy with my work at that stage. I really, like I said, enjoyed the job. So I thought, okay, this is great. You know, this performance review went exactly how I thought it would go. But then just at the end, he said to me, as kind of one of those, you know, areas for improvement, that I should up the pace. <laughs> that was the moment that I realized I was never going to up the pace for anyone. I was already working essentially the job of three people. I realized in that moment that no matter how much I did, and I'm not saying, you know, slack off, I still think it's important to work hard and to, you know, challenge yourself at a job. But in that moment, I realized that 
no matter how hard I worked, no matter how many people's jobs I worked, no matter how fast I worked, there was still always going to be something more to do, another job to do, another task to do. There was always going to be someone there wanting me to work faster or to do more. And no, no, that was the moment I realized that was not the life for me. I still worked there for, you know, a long time afterwards and I still enjoyed the job, but that was the moment that I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna do things the way I want to do them and at a pace that feels comfortable for me and I am not going to kill myself for someone else. So I am thrilled <laughs> to see that some other people are now coming around to that way of thinking of getting out of that rat race. I know how easy it is to get sucked into it and to think that that's all there is to life. You know, working faster, working harder, um, climbing the ladder, when really that's not what is important. And I think we are realizing that now and also, counting our blessings. I think we've all lost a lot during lockdown, um, some things temporarily, some things permanently, and I think we're all a lot more appreciative and grateful for what we have. We're more appreciative of the relationships that we have, we're more grateful for the people and the conveniences in our lives. Um, I think it's really opened our eyes to how much abundance we normally have and how easy it is for that to be taken away from us. That's a really important lesson that I think, that I hope that we all carry forward, just being a little bit more grateful for what we have and recognizing that we are all blessed in our own ways, some more than others, but that we each have something that we can be thankful for and just taking a moment on a regular basis to recognize um, that and to really reflect on what we do have, what we could potentially lose, how easily we could potentially lose it. Um, and just, yeah, taking a moment each day or each week even to sit down and count our blessings and to list all the things that we are grateful for. I feel a lot of us have also realized that we can survive and maybe even thrive under very difficult circumstances. As I've said, you know, a lot of people are realizing now how resourceful they are. They're picking up new skills and new hobbies. They're realizing how much they already have. And I think that's wonderful. You know, we're we're much more creative now, I feel. A lot of people had to, you know, pivot in their businesses. They had to figure out a new way of doing things. Maybe they had to take on like a side hustle or start something up. Um, much more creative, coming up with new solutions and new ideas, maybe stretching their money a little bit further. I think we have all learned that even under tough, even in tough times, that we can still get by. You know, we are all still here. I think this pandemic, tough as it's been, has given us all glimpses of a better world. A slower paced life, a brighter future, and a sense that, you know, we can do uh, lots of things, particularly when we all come together, when we all work together. We have an idea now, we see how things could be. Because if we can do all of those great things when times are tough, imagine how much we could achieve when the good times are here again. Please do share this video so that we can all take a moment to reflect on what we've learned and on how we want our lives to be. Gareth, Mila Mahagrev, August Vagimish of Shigalua. Slon.